There have been quite a few updates on the lawsuit between Zosadid and Sergio Costa, so I thought today seems like a good day to update you all and to give you my thoughts on it. It has been a while since I have done one of these, my god. But here we go anyway. The main things that have happened since we last talked about it is that the IP case has almost been settled hopefully. And the harassment case has been dropped. So of course we're going to talk about all of that, but first I have some very important disclaimers to make. The screenshots of tweets and the documents that I'm going to show you today were all taken from Sergio Costa's Twitter account. This is a public Twitter account where he willingly shared these things publicly. Since Twitter now allows you to see how many views a tweet has, we can see that some of the tweets that Sergio made that we're going to be referencing today have been viewed by over a thousand people. Plus, they've already been screenshotted and shared to Reddit and Kiwi Farms, where lots more people have seen it already as well. This, combined with the fact that everything that I'm going to be discussing today and this entire situation has already been made public by a public figure with over 1 million YouTube followers, means that everything that I'm going to be talking about today and everything that I'm going to be showing you today, which includes screenshots of tweets and documents, including everything contained within those tweets and documents, are public information and public knowledge. Therefore, any attempt by any party to claim that their privacy is being infringed upon is completely baseless. Furthermore, this video is based on speculation and opinion, is not meant to be taken as fact. And of course, this video is absolutely not meant to harass or defame any individual, group or company. And I would encourage anybody watching this video not to send hate or harass anybody mentioned in this video. And finally, I am not a lawyer and have no legal background, so everything that I say about these court documents and about the court proceedings are based on my own opinion and my attempt to understand legal jargon, which I am not trained to do. Jesus, that was a lot of words, <laughs> so let's move on. So I am going to be making some kind of salad butter bowl thing, and I wanted to try and make tzatziki with this kind of vegan yogurt. I don't know if it's gonna work, so if it doesn't work, I'm gonna make some homemade hummus instead. But we're going to attempt this. So on New Year's, Dissociated uploaded a court update video. And in it, she gave us some very interesting insights into the recent court proceedings. This means that he needs to withdraw all the copyright complaints that he made to YouTube about our videos, claiming that there was a disclaimer in them when that disclaimer actually wasn't there at all. The main points of it are that the videos that were taken down on Dissociated's YouTube channel should now be reinstated because a judge ruled that Sergio would need to remove the takedown notices he made on the videos and that he would have to write to YouTube about it. This to me seems like a massive deal because this is obviously what the entire IP case was about. Whether the videos belonged to Sergio Costa and needed to be removed or whether they belonged to Dissociated and needed to stay up. I have no idea why I'm doing this the most ridiculous way in the world when I could just do that. <laughs> he was also ordered to pay £10,000 towards Dissociated's legal fees. Although the rest of the fees that Dissociated paid before they started fundraising on crowd justice will not be reimbursed. Oh, I have a cat here. Oh, please don't stand on my laptop. Thank you. Thank you. Now it seems like Costa is very unhappy about this because from what I've understood, He's blaming his lawyers for this and has fired them and is now saying that they should pay the £10,000 instead of him. Truly winning behaviour. His reasoning for this is that he says the £10,000 are a result of the appeal that he put through or that his lawyers put through on his behalf. He says he did not want to send this appeal, but his lawyers did it anyway. And as a result of this appeal, obviously Dissociated's lawyers had to do more work and therefore were owed more money. But what's very strange about this is that he said on Twitter publicly that if things didn't go his way, he was planning to appeal. He said this very publicly months ago. And I'm pretty sure we even talked about it in a separate video. So that doesn't make much sense to me, but he did say that there was two appeals, one that he wanted to put through and one that he didn't, and it's the one that he didn't that he's arguing with. Now that's what I understood from what I read. I could be wrong, not fact, it's opinions. But if that is the case, the problem is that I've only seen one appeal and he only shared documents for one appeal. So I'm not sure where the second appeal is coming into play. 
bizarre. But of course we do have to go through Sergio's tweets so that we can see what he says about all of this. And again, these are public tweets. Response to Dissociated's 1st of January video. The Intellectual Property Enterprise Court found that Dissociated infringed on my copyright on at least 24 URLs, though the full extent of the infringement is yet to be determined. The court also found that I was not the joint author of one of the nine works at issue, the disclaimer, and that I should have followed the non-video content complaint procedure to report the disclaimer instead of filing takedown requests. This was in July 2022. Following the judgment, I emailed YouTube asking them to confirm the correct procedure to report content in video description boxes is the one I followed, and they did. This means that the part of the judgment that found that I somehow misled YouTube cannot stand. In August, I filed an appeal with the new evidence from YouTube. The appeal is pending. There will be a hearing in 2023, but we don't have a date yet. Meanwhile, there was a hearing in October to determine the orders the court would make with the current judgment. My position was that the lower court should wait before making any orders because if my appeal is successful, and why wouldn't it be when YouTube confirmed I followed the correct procedures, then Dissociated's counterclaim falls completely and there's no basis to order me to do anything. This smells really good. Except, I mean, you were kind of ordered to do something. I also argued that Dissociated's counterclaim was for damages, not an injunction. So the court would not order me to do anything. But they did. <laughs> However, I asked my barrister to tread carefully and not to push this last point since it would make it seem fair that the court found some of my takedown requests invalid, but could not order me to withdraw them. As I predicted, the judge was unpersuaded. Not sure why you think you know more than a judge. Just saying. Instead of moving to the next point, my barrister asked the judge for permission to appeal, at which point the judge ordered the parties to prepare written submissions on whether I should be ordered to withdraw those takedown requests. I hope this isn't too much reading and you're following this. I know it's just a lot of blah, 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 but like <laughs> you're following, it's not overly complicated. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen these already, so. This would be a second appeal on top of the one I had already filed. This is what I'm talking about, but I don't see a second appeal anywhere. I might be missing it, but I don't see it. I did not instruct my barrister or my solicitors to seek more appeals, quite the opposite. They also knew how difficult it had been for me to afford legal help in England. How hard? We'll find out how hard in a second, I just want to try this and see if it's any good. I'm scared because it's not like real yogurt and this yogurt is kind of sweet, so I don't know. This is delicious. Oh my God. Oh no, this is a problem because I could eat the whole bowl of this. I feel it could use more garlic, but it's really good. I'm gonna put a tiny bit more salt because it's actually a little bit too sweet. Although I think the garlic would help with that as well. Um, but it's got enough lemon, so I don't want to put any more lemon in it. My savings were exhausted shortly after filing the claim. Since then, I have worked 60 hour weeks to afford lawyers in England. To lower the cost as much as possible, I help prepare documents, bundles, and correspondence. I have not taken a single day off in two years. Now, listen, I get it, it's expensive. I'm sympathetic to that. However, in my humble opinion, you're making a claim based on a disclaimer that you didn't even write, taking down somebody's videos, in my opinion, because you don't like them and you felt butthurt. So you could stop at any time and save yourself the money. Like you could do that, um, but you've chosen not to. And you're about to explain why. Is it worth it? Absolutely. The peace of mind knowing that narc con artist can't use my work ever again, I'll get to that in a minute, has no price. Is that, is that defamation I see? Calling somebody a con artist. Not quite sure. Got any proof of that? <laughs> Just asking questions. <laughs> and what I will say is there's dispute over whether any of it is your work anyway, because some of it's just comments and responses to comments. There's an Instagram post and there's the disputed claimer, which you were found not to be an author of. So what work is never being used again? Responses to comments? Aren't those comments gone by now? Something doesn't sound quite right to me, but you know, again, my own humble opinion, not a lawyer, not involved in this in any way. Anyway, the parties prepared the written submissions. The judge was again unpersuaded and went like, this was a waste of time and Mr. Costa should pay the cost of these submissions. 
And that's where the 10K comes in. Listen, the judge is the one who said it's a waste of time. Who am I to disagree with a judge? As for the action, the judge said there was no clear winner, so I won't recover costs until my appeal goes through. When Dee Dee asked for the cost of the written submissions, my lawyers pointed out they can't recover costs you never actually incurred, meaning that if the submissions were paid for with crowd justice money, these costs are not recoverable. I mean, that one does seem like a fair point to me, although I do feel like maybe they should be reimbursed for all the money that they spent before the crowd justice fundraiser, because it would have been a lot, but that again is my opinion. <laughs> we requested copies of relevant invoices, copies of any agreements with crowd justice, a breakdown of how much had been spent, how much is left, etc. Dee Dee provided no evidence whatsoever, yet the judge still ordered me to pay 10K. Now I'm pretty sure that he's saying that him and his lawyers requested this, not the judge. At this point, I told my lawyers, look, the 10K is a result of you not following my instruction and acting in a way that the court found unreasonable. If anybody should be paying anything, it's you. I'm sure they loved that. They disagreed, so I made a wasted costs application. This is clearly where the him getting his lawyers to pay the 10,000 comes into play. But here's what Dissociative didn't tell you. She was ordered to write to YouTube asking them to delete the videos I scripted permanently. She had to make an undertaking to the court that she would remove my work from the channel, meaning she can't use it ever again. Here's my confusion though. At what point was it said that you scripted anything, that you owned any scripted works? Because wasn't it said that you only had comments and an Instagram post? Again, maybe I'm misunderstanding something, but from what I've understood, I'm not sure when it comes into play that you wrote any scripts. And the disclaimer was removed, to my knowledge. So, confusion. Confusion. She will have to pay me 24K for filing a bogus harassment case and discontinuing it before I even had a chance to be heard. I'll tell you the funny story behind that injunction one day. It's glorious. Don't believe me? That's okay. Thanks for reading anyway. Thanks for the proof there, Sergio, mate. Um, so he's just said 24k. I'm sure that's what he's asking for. There's That's not gone to court anywhere. So I don't think that it's been ordered. So that's just how much he's probably gonna ask for, I assume. From what Dissociated has said, they at no point withdrew the harassment claim because it was bogus. They're saying they withdrew it so that they could focus on the IP case. And because he said that he had no intention of harassing them again not harassing them again, of contacting them again. That doesn't mean that it's bogus though. That just means that they decided it wasn't worth pursuing anymore. I'm not saying that Sergio's lying. I'm not saying that he's twisting the truth, but if he was twisting the truth, this seems like a very good example of it. But here's some evidence just in case you're interested. And this is where he begins to show the court documents. Why can't I open this? There we go. What the fuck? Now I will say, although he does share court documents and says here's evidence, I don't see any evidence about the harassment section of this. So this is a document from October 31st. I won't read through the whole thing because there's no need. Some important points here is that it is talking about there being joint works. We already knew this. It says that Sergio is not an author of the disclaimer. We knew that as well. Which reminder, the disclaimer is what he made his claims to YouTube about. So if he doesn't have any copyright ownership over the disclaimer, then the takedown requests are based on something he doesn't own. And the counterclaim that there was unlawful interference involved in the part of Sergio is successful. Meaning that Sergio unlawfully interfered, <laughs> if you didn't get that. I will admit, this quinoa, completely overcooked. <laughs> but I cooked it in vegetable stock and it tastes so good, so it, I don't care. It is ordered that the second defendant shall by 4 p.m. on 14th of November, 2022, the defendant being dissociated, write to YouTube seeking the permanent removal from the defendant's dissociated YouTube channel of the videos removed as a consequence of the takedown request lodged by the claimant in respect of the use of the joint works, blah, 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 blah. Keep in mind, this is not the most recent hearing that dissociated was talking about in their video. This is from October. The second defendant shall by 4 p.m. on 18th of November 2022 serve on the claimant's solicitors a witness statement setting out the steps she has taken to comply with the thing above. <laughs> the party shall by 4 p.m. on the 21st of November 2022 file and serve written submissions 
of not more than blah, blah, blah. Addressing whether the claimant should be ordered to take all reasonable steps to withdraw his takedown requests or complaints made against the defendant's dissociated YouTube channel insofar as these requests relate to the use of the alleged use of the disclaimer. And whether the court should make the following orders, which is one that the claimant, i.e. Sergio, should remove his takedown requests and if the defendant needs to delete the social media works and some other stuff. He also posts documents from the 25th of November. And in this one, which comes after the October one, the claimant shall by 4 p.m. on 2nd of December 2022 take all reasonable steps to withdraw his takedown requests or complaints made against the defendant's dissociated YouTube channel insofar as those requests relate to the use of alleged use of the disclaimer. I stumbled over those words, but you got the point. So after that other one, they then said, actually, no, you need to take your takedown request down when they have to do with the disclaimer. And the disclaimer is the thing that he made the request based on through YouTube system. So what it seems to me is that this order supersedes the one to tell the associated that they need to remove the videos permanently. But that again is just an opinion and I'm not a lawyer. The parties have agreed that the issue set out in paragraph 7C of the 10th November order has fallen away. In relation to the issue set out in paragraph 7B of the 10th November order, I take to view that it would not be an appropriate exercise of the court's discretion to make an order which includes an order requiring the claimant to withdraw his takedown requests or complaints which were not found to be tortious in my judgment of 22nd July 2022. The parties have agreed that the issue set out in paragraph 7C of the 10th November order has fallen away. Those arising under paragraph 7D and C are provided for above. So many words. <laughs> I just want to eat my salad. Now here's some very, very interesting bits from this one. In the action, each side was partially successful. There was no overall winner. The appropriate order on cost is that there shall be no order as to costs. However, no significant cost would have been incurred by the defendants after the hearing on 18th of October had the claimant not raised its late objection to the court's jurisdiction. The defendants are entitled to their costs since that date is in accordance with blah blah blah. And in a document that he shares from the 7th of December, the claimant shall within 14 days of the date of this order pay to the defendant the sum of £10,000. So Sergio has to pay dissociated £10,000. Now after this on Twitter, Sergio shares the appeal that he filed in August. But to be honest, I don't really see the point in going through this entire thing because as I said, that was from August. Things have changed since then, the court has made new decisions. So in my non-lawyer view, at this point the appeal seems irrelevant. But there are some interesting bits from it that I wanted to share with you guys. And of course, you can read the whole thing yourself if you want to. So just to give an overview of what the appeal is, from my understanding of it, it is just Sergio's lawyers saying that they think the judge is wrong and explaining why. But in it, they do go over some of the judge's previous rulings. And although we have discussed them before, I think some of them bear repeating. On 22nd of February, 2021, Mr. Costa lodged takedown requests with YouTube relating to various URLs at which Mr. Costa stated the disclaimer of which Costa stated he was co-author was being used without his permission. On 13th of March, Mr. Costa noticed that the disclaimer had been removed from the channel such that from 13th of March, 2021, it was false to represent that the disclaimer was being used without his permission. The, the, the is what I just said. <laughs> However, Mr. Costa's representation of 22nd February 2021 was maintained at least until 25th of June and from 13th of March was maintained even though Mr. Costa knew it was false. So even though he knew that the disclaimer was removed, he kept going ahead with everything anyway. Mr. Costa intended that his takedown request based on the disclaimer should result in the defendant's videos being taken down even though he knew that the disclaimer was only contained in the description box of each video. Mr. Costa did this because he wanted to cause harm to the defendants. Gonna give you a minute to sit on that one. Now, obviously this is an appeal. So Sergio's lawyers are saying, hey, this finding was wrong and here's why. But again, who am I to argue with a the judge? There's also this section as well. I think a strong factor in the assessment is that there was neither evidence nor even an unsupported assertion made on behalf of Mr. Costa that he suffered any harm while the joint works remained on the defendant's channel. Nor was there evidence or assertion that he would profit from the removal. So again, like I said, he had nothing to gain from a disclaimer, according to the judge. 
I'm not gonna argue with the judge, guys. And also this section. This is part of where Sergio's lawyers are arguing that all of this is wrong. In the premise, it's clear that Mr. Costa was not under any duty to correct the 22nd February representation after he became aware that it had become false. So he didn't have any responsibility to make any correction, even though he knew the disclaimer was gone. Yet it is nonetheless clear beyond argument that even if such a duty existed, which is denied, do you want to go outside, sweetie? Okay. It was discharged. In finding that the 22nd February representation was not corrected, the judge misapplied the law and failed to consider, I thought that said marital, <laughs> material aspects of the evidence. The key passage of the judge's reasoning for the purpose reads as follows. And they also put in a snippet of questions that Sergio was asked and his answers given. So I'm going to put that on screen for you to read, but I won't read the whole thing to you because I feel like at this point you're so bored of me reading. So you have both sides. This is his argument of it. Also, at some point in these documents, I highlighted the word trial skeleton because it just made me keep thinking of like a skeleton lawyer. <laughs> and that just made me giggle. I'm, I'm very easy to please. So what are my thoughts on all of this? Well, as a non-lawyer, my opinion is that this entire case is stupid. To me, he just seems petty and entitled and doesn't have a leg to stand on. And in some cases, sure, he makes valid arguments, but those valid arguments, in my opinion, are based on ridiculousness. <laughs> but of course, that is just my own opinion, so feel free to let me know yours in the comments, I would love to hear it. This is not the end. There are still some court dates to come, hopefully not too many. Uh, so Dissociated has said that they're still fundraising through Crowd Justice to pay for their legal fees, so I will link the fundraiser in the description if you want to check it out. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today as I make a chickpea quinoa salad with spinach and veg and honeyed lemon dressing and vegan tzatziki. There's a lot going on, but I tried a bit as really good, so. <laughs> I kind of realized that people who only watch my Dissociated content and haven't watched me in a while will be like, why? Is Van making salad? Don't ask questions, just accept it. Of course, if you haven't subscribed already, I would really, really appreciate that you do. You can also just double check that you are subscribed and that YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you from my channel. And you know the drill. Like, comment, share, follow me on social media. I'm Vangelina Skov everywhere. And I really hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.